Okay, well, welcome everybody to our uh, first instance of a virtual uh, awards and recognition ceremony here uh, in the ESC department. Uh, I'm Shinung Cheng, I'm an associate professor uh, in ESC, and uh, uh, I'll be uh, taking us through the program today. Uh, we have a nice uh, program that honors our, our degree recipients as well as um, our awardees. Uh, and uh, we'll have also some remarks from, uh, from some of our uh, beloved professors here in the department. Uh, so uh, we're gonna move along and, and I'll pass it along to the chair of the department, Professor Bruno Sinopoli for uh, his remarks and, and uh, for uh, moving along with the program. Uh, Bruno, please. Thank you, Shinang. And uh, dear parents, uh, students and colleagues, uh, uh, welcome uh, to our ESC virtual recognition and award ceremony. Um, a while ago when I was envisioning speaking to all of you, I would have never imagined that it would be from the quiet of my office. Uh, and let me warn you, this is a quiet uh, time that can be disrupted at any time if the kids decide to pop in. Um, today is a day of celebration. Um, we have a lot to celebrate. Um, we provisionally celebrate our graduates uh, waiting uh, for the proper university-wide commencement that many of you have been looking forward uh, for a few years now. Uh, don't worry, we will make it, uh, um, we will make it happen. Um, uh, please uh, feel free to shout whatever you want in the, in the chat box. Um, um, in addition to our graduates, uh, um, we also celebrate uh, the excellent students uh, who are receiving uh, our ESC awards. Um, Finally, we celebrate the careers of uh, two of our great colleagues uh, who have dedicated collectively uh, 78 years uh, to Washington University, to our departments, and to uh, several generations of students, Professor Heinz Shuttler and Professor Hiro Mukai. Uh, we, uh, let me just uh, tell you a little bit uh, about our times. We, we certainly live in, uh, unprecedented times. Uh, as engineers, uh, when a uh, problem arises, uh, maybe we commiserate for a moment, uh, uh, but then uh, we roll up our sleeves and move, uh, and move ahead. So I'm extremely proud of our students, our colleagues, uh, um, our staff for embracing the new reality and adapting, it, uh, adapting to it in order to achieve what are always our ultimate goals excellence in education and research. On March 9th, uh, I was about to embark on a business trip to India to visit some universities. Uh, I never thought that uh, two weeks later, we would be on a full online mode. Uh, in our lifetime, we have never faced as much uncertainty as uh, um, the, the one presented by this public health crisis. Our decisions are usually founded on well-sourced data on carefully constructed models that predict risk and potential outcomes, and on previous experience. Right now, unfortunately, uh, data is limited. Predictive models are plentiful, but not very well validated. And we have no recent experience with just such a complex situation. So um, what do we do to move forward? So what we, what we are doing, we continue monitoring the situation especially the public health situation and the effect that it has on our lives. We collect more data to create more accurate models. We looked at um, other analogous societal disruptions for inspiration and ideas. And most importantly, we adapt as we go. Uh, the key to making decisions in, uh, in this current environment is knowing and accepting that there are unknowns. We are currently planning for potential scenarios and act upon it. At the same time, we accept that we might need to change course uh, at a moment's notice should a new variable present itself uh, or better solution become apparent. In all this uncertainty, one thing is certain for me. Uh, there is no perfect substitute for in-person interaction. As the, the great Greek philosopher Aristotle uh, used, used to say, Humans are, and his words were, zone politikon, which means uh, social animals. And I am surely looking forward to reconnecting with all of you in person, hopefully very, very soon. 
Let me not hold, uh, hold you off anymore and start our program. Uh, we'll start our program by honoring uh, our uh, two uh, retiring faculty, Professor Heinz Shatler, Professor Hiro Mukai. Professor Heinz Shatler uh, did his uh, uh, diploma in mathematics uh, from the Bayerisch Julius Maximilians Universität Würzburg in 19, 1982. Apologies for the bad pronunciation. Hein? And uh, after holding a one-year position as a postdoctoral fellow at the University of California, Davis, uh, Professor Shatler joined uh, Washington University in St. Louis faculty in 1987 uh, as an assistant professor in the Department of System Science and Mathematics, which is now part of our ESC department. Uh, Professor Shatler's research interests lie in geometric methods in the theory uh, of nonlinear dynamical systems with emphasis on optimal control theory. In the past, he has done research on models arising in various fields of applications, including economics, power systems, electronics, and biomedical, and biomedical systems. Um, before I give uh, Heinz the floor, I'll uh, also introduce Professor Hiro Mukai, who received his uh, bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Waseda University. He then received his master's degree and doctorate in electrical engineering and computer science, uh, uh, both at the University of California in Berkeley, just uh, a few years before me. Um, after a brief service as a postdoctoral engineer at Berkeley, he joined Washington University as assistant professor in 1975. 82, he was on sabbatical uh, at, back at the University of Berkeley, of California, Berkeley, and worked as a consultant in San Francisco for Pacific Gas and Electric. Um, in, uh, in the late 90s, uh, still while on sabbatical, he, went, he, was, he taught at the University of Namur in Belgium and worked at the researcher at the University of Ghent, still in Belgium. So um, without uh, further ado, I would like to turn the floor first to Professor Shatler and then to Professor Mukai. Okay. Thank you very much, Bruno, for the nice introductory words. And I apologize for throwing this long name of the German university at you, but that's how it's called. Okay. Uh, I mean, talking to the students, now you're sort of at the beginning of your career and it looks like you have a huge horizon in front of you. Hiro and I, we are looking backward. In my case, I'm looking backward for 33 years, which actually look very short from my perspective. And maybe this is a good opportunity to thank Washington University also for all the uh, opportunities it has provided to me. One of the reasons why the 33 years look short is that I pretty much managed to do most of the times what I would like to do. Okay. At the same time, I, it's rather difficult to give some words of wisdom. So I thought I may talk a little bit about two things that came to mind when I was at the beginning of my career and take it as a little bit advice for the students if you want. I remember when I was coming to Washington University for my job interview, one of the questions which I was asked is whether I'm comfortable with stochastic control because basically the idea was that the faculty liked me, they liked the area I was working in, nonlinear control, but they needed somebody to teach probability stochastic processes. Of course, in the job interview, there's only one correct answer to such a question. Yes, of course, I know that and I can do that. As a result, I have been teaching these courses for 30 years at the university. And the truth is that after a while, when I really got into it, it was fun, I liked it. And so one never knows how things come. Uh, another very interesting story I had when I arrived at Washington University from Davis, the chairman of the department was Professor Zaborski, a very distinguished engineer. He was a member of the National Academy of Sciences. He was a power systems person. 
He had been quite instrumental in understanding the famous blackout in New York. So he was a well-known and good person. And when I came, he talked to me, he explained to me, well, you're a mathematician, I'm an engineer. By I, he meant himself, of course. And so he was not quite sure whether mathematics would be that much useful for other things. And I also was not quite sure whether my sort of step into engineering, how it would end up. And it so happened that after two or three years, one of his students came to me with a question. They were interested in power systems analysis, in stability, in problems of voltage collapse, which led to some nasty mathematical problems with singularities. I discussed with the student, I gave him some advice. He was maybe a little bit skeptical about it because dividing with zero is dangerous, multiplying with zero is easy, but he tried it out anyway and it seemed to work very beautifully. Uh, he showed it to Dr. Zaborski and the next day he was in my office and that was the beginning of a very long and fruitful collaboration. In fact, if I look back on my career, those, this is the collaboration I value most and it went for 10, easily 15 years. I met with Dr. Zaborski still just a few days before his death in his office and I would have never thought that this would be one of the directions in which I would go. So especially now in these times of great uncertainty that one really has no, almost no clue what the next half year will bring, let alone two or three years. Uh, to me, there always was a lot of uncertainty. Quite frankly, I would have never thought that I would leave Germany and end up in the United States, but it happened. One can embrace it and my recommendation would be try to make the best out of it, whatever it is, okay? The time AC will be different, was different from the time BC. I like this AC, BC after and before Corona. It makes perfect sense now and Unfortunately, I did a little bit of work on epidemiological systems from the mathematical point of view a few years ago. And the bad news is that this one is very nasty with the periods that are longer exposed, these periods when people do not show systems. So unfortunately, it will stay around for you, the students, for quite a while. Don't be too scared. Everything will eventually go away and the uncertainty is there. We cannot avoid it. Try to make the best out of it. You are students in system science and electrical engineering and the key in our field is feedback. Well, you will have to adjust to those very strange situations which we have. And these are all my five cents of wisdom I can give you at the moment. And for the students, I wish you the best of luck in your careers and hopefully everything will work out very well for you. Thank you. Well, should I begin? Thank you, Heinz. Thank you for your, uh, for your words of wisdom. Uh, um, um, we'll then uh, uh, give the floor to Professor Hiro Mukai. Well, thank you, uh, Bruno. Thank you for the kind word. Okay, congratulations, everybody. Uh, next slide, please. This year, you're facing some life-changing decisions. One could try to solve them mathematically. Since I teach a course in after control, you could formulate the problem like this. Well, this is just too complex and modeling is not too easy, too general. So, next, please. As you know, as you may know, my teaching philosophy is based on providing concrete examples. Also, sometimes it helps to look at, look to a past time in one's life when a similar challenge was faced. So let me give you an example of when I faced a big change in my life. Next, please. Uh, the year was 1975. I changed from a graduate student to a professor. 
like looking back, yeah, the first two years as a PhD student was a very, very relaxed exper uh, experience or existence. Next, please. I was in Berkeley, and you can see the scene was very relaxed, and you can see San Francisco across the valley. Next, please. Uh, San Francisco is even more relaxed. Uh, music, please. Please. Next slide, please. Also, marijuana was available everywhere at that point. Uh, uh, I didn't smoke cigarettes, so I didn't try it. But uh, next, please. Uh, personally, gasoline costs 35 cents a gallon at that point. Before This was before the OPEC price jump in 74, I believe. And I swam every day at noon time at the university swimming pool. I took two PE classes every quarter since it did not affect the total tuition, well, which was covered by fellowships anyway. Uh, of course, I took a full load of grad level math and EE courses and did my PhD research. Next, please. But the background to my idyllic life was turbulent. Uh, for example, the famous uh, well, in a free speech movement had started at Berkeley in 64. Uh, during the 70s, students are protesting against the Vietnam War as it expanded and also the lottery draft system increased the chance of men being selected to serve in the war in Vietnam. No academic deployment. I personally saw a confrontation between protesters and blue meanies on the edge of campus. Only one block away from my apartment, a student, Perry Hurst, was kidnapped by the Symbianese Liberation Army and whole trouble started. Next, please. Well, personally, in my third year in the PhD program, I felt increasing pressure to finish my PhD from my peers, not so much from my advisor. In the fall of my fourth year, I was basically finishing my PhD in December and started looking for a job. Unfortunately, not too many academic posts are available. That started in January. Most academic posts started in September. So I was faced with a possible postdoc in Texas or faculty position in Venezuela. Uh, anyway, one day while I was shopping for a suit to wear, for upcoming job interviews, my heart started beating fast and I began to feel faint. I collapsed in a coffee shop and had to take a taxi all the way from downtown San Francisco to my apartment in Berkeley, leaving my car in San Francisco. Well, when my doc asked me if I was worried about something, I denied any problems. But then, right in front of him, I started having the same symptoms. And my doc immediately gave me an end, his diagnostics. diagnosis. Well, panic attack, and he gave me a paper bag to breathe in slowly. Next, please. Anyway, so I took care of the physiological aspect of the big uh, panic attack. I persevered. I was luckily hired as a postdoc at Berkeley for the spring of my fourth year. In late spring, finally, three academic offers from U.S. universities came through, and I started as an assistant professor in the Department of Systems and Mathematics at WashU in fall 1975. Next, please. So what is my point? Sometimes all the choices before us seem daunting and overwhelming, and we may even suffer from a panic attack or two. But if we persevere and just wait long enough, something good may come along. This may you will have accomplished one big milestone in your life, a university diploma, or two, or three, and I am retiring. Suddenly now, due to the coronavirus, the world has changed drastically and we may face unforeseen difficulties, but we have developed tools to overcome them. We just need to keep 
carefully moving ahead with optimism. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Mukai and, and Professor Shatler for those uh, remarks. Uh, let me also add uh, my thanks and gratitude to Professors Mukai and Shatler who have been great mentors to me uh, as I've um, started my career at Washington University these last several years. So we're now gonna move on and, and recognize um, our uh, undergraduate degree re recipients, those that uh, we, we, we would have anticipated uh, having a walk uh, uh, in just a couple weeks here, uh, uh, current, current circumstances um, aside. So let's move on. Um, so we'll be recognizing the recipients of the Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. And we'll be recognizing now the Bachelor of Science in System Science and Engineering. And also the Bachelor of System Science in Engineering. We also have recipients in the Bachelor of Science in Applied Science and Electrical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Applied Science, System Science and Engineering, as well as a second major in System Science and Engineering. And with that, we're gonna uh, recognize our award recipients and I'll hand it back over to Professor Sinopoli who will uh, describe the awards. Very good. Thank you, Shinang. Um, we are going to um, um, <clears throat> celebrate the awardees of our uh, ESC, um, ESC awards now, uh, who receive their digital certificates, uh, uh, digital certificates today. We are going to start with uh, the David H. Levy uh, Outstanding Senior Award. Um, it's, this is supported by an endowment established by David Levy's uh, grandfather, General Arnold S. Dane. General Dane had a high regard for his grandson education at Washington University School of Engineering. And this prize is given annually beginning with uh, the class of 1987. The awardees for uh, this year's um, uh, outstanding senior award are Emilia Delzel. Emilia is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in System Science and Engineering with minors in Finance and Computer Science. She's from Cleveland, Ohio. She has several hobbies, hiking, biking, plays the French horn, and she likes solving crossword puzzles. Her favorite course uh, is where uh, two courses, ESC 447, Robotics Lab with Professor Dennis Mel and ESC 455, which is Quantitative Methods for Systems Biology with Professor Brown. Uh, Amelia is moving to Los Angeles to work for Boeing as a satellite system ground systems engineer. Congratulations, Amelia. Next recipient is uh, Jesse Corvin. Uh, Jesse is graduating with a Bachelor of Science uh, degree in Systems Engineering in engineering um, with a second major in financial engineering and a minor in computer science. He's from Livingston, New Jersey. He likes to uh, play several sports and he likes to play poker. I might make a career out of it if you're good enough. And his favorite uh, ESC course is uh, ES, was ESC 499, the capstone system science and engineering. He's going to work in the financial sector for PGIM. And here's a note from Jesse. Thank you to the ESC department for the award recognition. And I also just want to say that these past four years have been challenging, but I've been fortunate enough to have friends who I can spend my time with, whether it be studying or in social settings. And college was a lot better thanks to them. So a big thank them as well. Uh, the next awardee is Patrick Naughton. 
Patrick is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Electroengineering, a second major in Computer Science. He's a local, he's from St. Louis, and, uh, and uh, being from St. Louis, of course, he likes rock climbing, given the enormous uh, mountain ranges that are around uh, town, and, uh, and running. His uh, favorite ESC course was ESC 465, Digital Systems Lab, Professor Ed Richter. He is uh, moving on and staying in the academic field and is going to pursue a graduate degree in robotics at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. Here's a... Hi, my name is Patrick Naughton and I'm graduating from the ESC department this year. My favorite part about the ESC department was all the opportunities to do research with professors like Sylvia Zhang, as well as meeting all of the fellow students with similar interests to mine. Um, in the future, I am going to use my ESC degree studying robotics, pursuing a graduate degree at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. The next recipients is Yu Chi Liu. He is graduating with a Bachelor of Science uh, degree in Electrical Engineering and a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. He's from Shanghai, China. He likes uh, watching movies, playing video games, following soccer games, and playing basketball. His favorite class, again, is uh, ESC 465 Digital Systems Lab with Professor Richter. Um, I have had uh, uh, the opportunity to interact quite a bit with Yu Chi. He's one of the students who took the uh, most advantage of my uh, office hours and we have discussed options for his graduate school and he decided uh, to join Georgia Tech to do his, uh, his PhD. Congratulations, Yuchi. What was my favorite experience in ESE? I think it would be talking to different professors in the department. They're all very friendly and helpful and I learned a lot from these different perspectives and uh, how I uh, utilize my ESE degree in the future. I'm still in the field double E, so I guess my degree translates into the skill sets I need in order to pursue my goal of becoming a circuit designer. Uh, my parting words for current and future students in the department would be, believe in yourself and work hard, you will do great. Thank you. The next set of awards uh, is under the umbrella of the Russell R. Pfeiffer Outstanding Junior Award. Um, th this award uh, was established under, um, under the name of Russell Pfeiffer, who was the chair of the Department of Electrical Engineering from 1971 to 1975. Fortunately, he passed away in 1975. He helped establish the Sensory Biophysics Laboratory in the Department of Physiology at the Washington University Medical School. This laboratory investigated the functioning of the cochlea, the sensory organ of hearing. Primary co contribution of SBL was promoting the now accepted notion that the cochlea is a nonlinear and active system. As recently as the 80s, the cochlea was considered by most to be a linear uh, passive system. The laboratory was also unique in its emphasis uh, on using the response of the auditory nerve as a non-invasive measure of the functioning of the cochlea. The award is given for, to outstanding, for outstanding academic achievement in electrical and system engineering during the first three years of undergraduate education. And the winners uh, of the award uh, this year are Katie Mockett. She is pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in System Science and Engineering with a minor in Computer Science. She's from Seattle and uh, she likes playing soccer. She plays for the WashU Varsity uh, women's soccer team, and she likes cooking. The favorite course so far, still has some time to go, is ESC 351, Signals and Systems. Hi, my name is Katie Mockett. I'm a junior from Seattle, Washington. Thank you so much for this award. It's a true honor. My favorite class in ESE is Signals and Systems, and outside of school, my hobbies include playing soccer for the varsity women's soccer team and cooking. Uh, next, uh, our D is Zach Vernon. He's pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in Systems, Science, and Engineering. He likes woodworking and carpentry, and uh, his favorite courses so far are ESC 105, is the introduction to ESC and ESC 205. Hello, my name is Zach Vernon. Thank you for honoring me with this award. 
I'm a dual degree student. So prior to coming to WashU, I studied at Randolph College in Lynchburg, Virginia. My hobbies are woodworking and carpentry. And my favorite classes thus far have been ESE 105 and ESE 205. Thank you. Okay. Next uh, is Sierra Wong. She is uh, uh, pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering. She spent the first two years of college at Case Western uh, Reserve University studying Biomedical Engineering and Electrical Engineering. Um, she likes spending time outdoors and, uh, and traveling. Um, and uh, so far, she has enjoyed all of the few classes that she has taken at Washington University. Way to go, Sierra. Uh, next uh, is the, uh, the Rick Grotsky ESC Award for Technical Achievement. Uh, the Rick Grotsky ESC Award for Technical Achievement is given uh, in his memory. He was assistant dean uh, and uh, from 19, of registrar from 1999 to 2001. He was a professor of electrical engineering from 1990 to 1999. He received his bachelor's in masters and doctoral degrees, all from electrical engineering at, from Washington University. This prize is given annually beginning with the class of 2003. Rick unfortunately passed away in 2002 due to complications of lung cancer. cancer. Uh, this award is given for outstanding technical achievement, uh, typically for original innovative uh, research or design. First, our award is, is uh, uh, Jack Hyde. He is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering with a minor in Computer Science and Master of Science in Electrical Engineering. He's from Mahomet, Illinois. He likes running and climbing, probably together with Patrick. And his favorite course so far is, uh, and uh, I see a trend here, ESC 465 Digital System Laboratory with Professor Richter. My favorite experience in ESE at WashU was my research experience in Dr. Liu's lab. I got to work on a really fascinating um, FPGA project for an imaging system that he's developing starting in the summer of 2018. And I'm still working on it right now for my master's thesis. Because Dr. Liu was willing to give me such an exciting project, uh, I was really able to fall in love with the material and teach myself and develop a deep understanding. And it's also the reason that I was able to get a, an exciting job starting this fall. Um, so I'm thankful for the incredible opportunity and the mentorship he gave me. So I have some words from Professor Lu. Uh, Jack has been working my research group since uh, uh, 2018 when he received a WashU Summer Undergraduate Research Award to jumpstart his research project. He has been designing and testing new digital hardware implemented uh, within uh, FPGAs for accelerated readout and processing of image data for an experimental uh, ultra-fast, ultra-sensitive cam camera being developed jointly by my lab and Jim Boxley Labs in physics. Jack's FPGA will be able to manage 10 or more uh, 500 megahertz ADC data streams, localize photon arrival events in space and time, and send this data directly to a data acquisition computer over a gigabit ethernet. What has impressed me most is Jack's independence, creativity, and dark determination to solve challenging technical problems. Even professional digital design engineers would struggle with this project, but Jack's performance has easily exceeded my expectations. Congratulations again, Jack. Next is the Professional Achievement Award, which is uh, given for outstanding professional achievement in electrical and systems engineering, for achievement outside of academia, typically development of new commercial products, either with an existing company or in the creation of a startup company. And this year award goes to Anton Salem, who's uh, graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in system science and engineering. He's from Cleveland, he likes playing soccer, doing engineering projects, spending time with friends. His favorite course was the Capstone Design System Science and Engineering. Anton founded ETK, the Engineering Test Kitchen, 
which partners students with companies for small engineering jobs. Its enthusiasm and spirit have driven the success of this group and it surmounted the legal and institutional barriers to create a program valued by students and industry alike. Congratulations, Sal. Anton. Hi, my name is Anton Salem from Cleveland, Ohio. In my free time, I enjoy playing soccer, building new engineering related projects and spending time with friends on campus. Easily my favorite course was the capstone course um, in the ESE department, which is something that I encourage everyone to take. Thank you very much for the support, Wash you. Wonderful. Uh, next is the Outstanding Graduate uh, Assistant Award, uh, Graduate Student Assistant to the Instructor Award. And this is a new award that uh, we just established to, um, um, to honor um, students uh, who do an outstanding work as assistant to the instructor in, in courses. And uh, uh, the inaugural recipient of the award is Eric Cowie, who is uh, pursuing a PhD in system science and mathematics. He's from Ashburn, Virginia. He plays guitar, Dungeons and Dragons. He likes cooking and uh, performing yoga. His uh, favorite course uh, uh, so far has been ESC 544, Optimization and Optimal Control with Professor Shatler. Hi, I'm Eric Calvi, and I have two pieces of advice for current and future students. The first is to always keep a strong basis in the fundamental courses like calculus or probability or linear systems. And the second is a final reminder to never divide a matrix by another matrix. Thanks. Both were great suggestions uh, that I'm sure a lot of us uh, uh, sympathize with, especially with the second one. Um, next uh, is our 2019-2020 Outstanding uh, Teaching Award. This year's recipients of the award are Dr. Matt, Matthew Liu and Dr. Shinan Cheng. And the award is, um, is given for their exemplary work creating and implementing uh, uh, the new course EAC 105, Introduction to Electrical and Systems Engineering. This course has become a foundational course for our degree. Uh, Students who come uh, uh, in, uh, into, into this course follow a, always a very similar uh, path in terms of feeling. Uh, they struggle at the beginning and they think that the world is falling upon them. And, but by the end of the course, they feel empowered and they realize how much they've learned and, uh, and they confidently move uh, um, on with taking other classes and uh, um, and and, uh, and 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 succeed. So it has been uh, it has been really a, a pleasure to see this uh, this course uh, uh, being created and is contributing very highly to creating a, a, a strong cohort uh, of uh, uh, of students in uh, in the department. Uh, I would like to personally thank uh, both. Uh, uh, Matt and Shinang for their commitment to the department in creating this fantastic course. Congratulations. All right, uh, we promised uh, not to make this too long. So I would like just uh, to, uh, to conclude by congratulate, congratulating all the degree recipients, uh, all the award winners and, and the hero and, and Heinz. Um, Again, these are, uh, these are difficult times, but uh, we'll march through it. Everything will go well. Please uh, stay healthy and stay safe. I'm looking forward to welcoming all of you back on campus. Uh, to the people who are graduating, uh, best of luck with your future career and uh, stay in touch. We would love to hear about your achievements. I'm gonna pass it now to Shinang if he wants to conclude. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, you know, I hope everybody um, stays safe and well. Uh, just a quick note that this video has been recorded and will be available through uh, the YouTube uh, ESC, WashU YouTube ESC uh, YouTube channel. And uh, we'll send out an email to the students and, and their families on how to access that as well. 
if you want to share that with folks who aren't able to join us today. So thank you again, everybody, and I uh, hope everybody has a great summer. And uh, for those of you coming back, we hope to see you back uh, in the fall on campus. Thank you. Thank you.